Uh, so my name is uh, Reinhold Salmen, and uh, I will present, present to you uh, a parallel algorithm for uh, global arc system filtering for the all different constraint. And uh, I've done this work uh, together with my colleagues at uh, Huawei's uh, Paris Research Center in France. Oh, what's happening here? <laughs> okay. Oh, here, here. Of course, that as well. Okay, that's better. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah so uh, all different. It uh, appears in many uh, constraint programs like puzzles, uh, and queens, for example, uh, Sudoku, um, and also in uh, industrial problems where it often appears as, um, as a resource uh, uh, constraint. And uh, so it's important, and uh, luckily there exists a uh, very efficient uh, sequential algorithm uh, for uh, global arc system filtering, uh, and it has been invented by uh, Jean Charles Vergin in the 90s. And uh, oh, and uh, I will uh, briefly explain um, uh, how it works so, um, uh, because we will be parallelizing this later. Okay, so suppose we have an, um, an uh, all, all different of three variables, A, B, and C, and uh, they take values um, uh, one, two, three, and four. Uh, the first thing we do is we consider the variable value graph, which is the bipartite graph with variables on one side and the values on the other side. And you draw an edge every time a value appears in the domain of a variable. Uh, the first thing to, to do then is to find a maximum matching. Uh, and if you can, then you know that there's at least one uh, solution to that uh, problem. Um, and actually, this maximum matching also is a maximum flow. So you can subtract this flow from a flow graph, um, and then you uh, consider the residual flow graph. Uh, and then on this residual flow graph, uh, we then have to find the strongly connected components. And then we can identify all the edges all the arcs uh, that cross SECs um, and are not part of the matching. And those uh, are uh, the ones that are inconsistent. And so here we see the arc uh, from C, uh, C2. And that means that uh, the value two uh, does not need to be in uh, the domain of C. And we can safely remove it without uh, removing any of the solutions. So here we go. That's uh, Algorithm and so now what we uh, what we did we parallelized this algorithm <laughs> in such a way uh, that it will work on uh, generic parallel systems, uh, be it uh, shared memory systems, distributed memory systems. Uh, it should be able to work on massively parallel systems, uh, really big ones, uh, and it will work fine as long as the problem is large enough. Uh, and that is basically also our goal of this. Uh, algorithm is to apply to really large problems. Uh, think of a thousand variables or more. Uh, so the first thing um, we should notice is that uh, graph search in this algorithm is our workhorse. Uh, take the maximum matching. Uh, you can use Ford Fulkerson for that. And um, uh, it worked for Ford Fulkerson works by finding uh, augmented paths. Uh, one by one, and you start from a variable and you've, um, you, work, you work your way through to the sink. Um, and so this, this, the, these augmented paths are found uh, every time by graph search. And you can use uh, depth first search or uh, breadth first search for that. It doesn't really matter in which order you traverse the graph. Uh, and this is also our uh, chance for parallelization. Um, for strongly connected components, uh, the sequential algorithm uses Tarzan's algorithm, which is very efficient, um, but it relies on uh, depth for search, which is um, well, this, so the, which is going to be difficult to parallelize. So um, there are there's there are also other methods like the divide and conquer method, where uh, it doesn't really matter anymore what kind of graph search uh, you, you use. Uh, this is how it works. So you start with a pivot uh, vertex and you follow um, first the uh, arcs in forward direction. You mark the vertices uh, and then you start over. But then 
from vertex C, but you follow the arcs in backward direction. Uh, and now all the vertices that have been marked twice, those are on SEC, and uh, you can remove it, and we can uh, start all over with with another uh, pivot vertex. Um, so this graph shows that's the thing we're going to parallelize, um, and uh, parallel computing is all about speed. So um, we have to know what is costly and what, uh, uh, and what is cheap uh, in time. Um, and for that, we use a, um, uh, a, a cost model. And we use the bulk synchronous parallel cost model, which was also developed in the 90s by uh, Les Valiant and uh, Bill McCall. And uh, so there's a bunch of ingredients in this cost model. First of all, there's the BSP computer, and it uh, consists of a number of processors here, P, um, and each of the process, all the processors each have um, their uh, local memory. And these processors, they can communicate uh, over a network. Uh, also, um, another ingredient is the structurization of computation. A BSP computation uh, is, is highly structured. So here's a diagram. Uh, and now I can use the laser pointer, right? So uh, uh, time flows here from, um, this is an illustration of the computation. Time here flows from left to right. Uh, these green horizontal uh, bars, these represent local computation. These blue arrows here, they represent messages that processes send to each other. And this big vertical bar here is um, a synchronization. And uh, so these three ingredients, they make up one super step and a whole piece of computation is a sequence of those super steps. Now, and this, this, this structure, uh, allows uh, a very uh, simple cost model while still being realistic. Uh, and on top of that, uh, this structurization also forces us to think in a particular way, which makes actually developing an algorithm a little bit easier. So, okay, we're going to parallelize, parallelize this uh, graph search. So let's start with first sequentially again, uh, we look at graph first search. How do you do that? Uh, well, you have a queue, uh, which you uh, at the beginning uh, put uh, the root vertex in, and uh, su successively you do queue uh, a vertex you visited, and you yeah, queue the neighbors, and uh, you continue like that until you visited all your vertices. Uh, and now, what can we do on a par on a BSP computer? So the idea is my, is to give every uh, process its own uh, queue. And then uh, have it visit uh, all uh, the vertices in this queue locally. Um, but then the, pro uh, the problem is a little bit okay, how do you prevent that two processors are going to um, uh, walk a path? Uh, uh, how do you prevent that two pa uh, paths of two processors are, are, are going to intersect? Because then um, I mean, it scales. Um, so to prevent that, uh, we partition the graph and give each part to a processor. Um, uh, but then we have the problem that when, when you're going to include uh, the neighbors, uh, a neighbor can actually be on a different processor. Um, so uh, to deal with that, instead of immediately putting in the first queue, we put, it, put the, the neighbors in the second queue. And we wait, we process until the first queue is empty. And when all, all of them are, are done, uh, they're exchanging these queues so that all the vertices end up on the processor that owns it. And then uh, the search uh, continues. Um, so what you notice here is that um, when you, um, uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the tree that uh, is formed by the BFS, uh, every uh, level here uh, is, all the vertices in one, in one particular level are at the same time in the same queue. And that means that uh, the, the number of exchanges we're going to do, uh, going, have to do here is basically the height of the tree. Um, uh, and that means that this, this algorithm will take uh, at most uh, time proportional to the, the diameter of the tree. Uh, another thing what we can uh, also here make use of is that we have multiple queues um, and actually um, if we have 
if you put a root vertex a different one in each cube we can actually explore multiple paths simultaneously uh, which is a uh, Really nice if we want to find multiple augmented paths at the same time while finding our maximum matching. Uh, right, so um, um, well, so so we have to do these exchanges, and uh, I'll already uh, spoil this a little bit. Uh, communication is going to be uh, expensive, so whatever we can do to prevent it, uh, that's uh, that's one. Uh, so one optimization we can do, for example, is that to take all the um, vertices that are already local, we can put them imme immediately in the first queue um, and process until uh, we've uh, have all we have processed our local part, and then all uh, the, the queues here they only have vertices from other processors, and then we can do the exchange. And um, this actually um, appears to be. Uh, working uh, uh, quite faster. Um, and this is the um, method that I will also show the results uh, of. Um, uh, this is not, uh, by the way, this is not uh, an invention of us. I mean, this is um, uh, engineering practice that has, is happening in, in other um, uh, graph analytic um, systems like uh, Pregel, for example. That's quite common practice. Uh, all right, so um, we did this on, uh, so, uh, now I'm going to show you some tests. So we have two test systems. I have a nice workstation with 64 cores. It's quite new. Um, and we have an old cluster uh, with InfiniBand connection and uh, 200 cores. And um, I've put here um, the throughput and synchronization here in uh, nanoseconds um, to relate this to um, a local computation. Yeah? So I mean, all processors nowadays, they run at uh, one, two, three, four uh, gigahertz. So memory access locally is one nanosecond, let's say. Uh, so you see here that synchronization is like 5 million uh, of those. And this will, we'll see later that this plays a role. Uh, so the first test we've uh, we've done is, uh, is, is to feel good about ourselves, uh, placing uh, uh, queens on an empty, um, uh, uh, chessboard, um, and we take a very uh, big board, and um, well, uh, solving this problem is uh, is trivial because there is an analytic solution. Uh, so we we in our CP solver we've made, uh, let the search heuristic pick uh, those uh, queens uh, according to the analytic solution, and what we then measure is only uh, the time spent spent on filtering, basically. Um, and uh, uh, right, so and I comp we compare this with uh, the sequential algorithm uh, and with uh, G code. Um, and I put G code in there to be able to relate this to a real CP solver because our solver is very simple, it only has two constraints. Um, is it the time for the first solution? Yes, we, uh, we, we so find no, there is no, back no backtracking, exactly, exactly. So uh, what you see here is that on the workstation uh, from about a thousand queens, it's faster, uh, the parallel uh, algorithm and uh, on the work on the cluster with uh, slower communication takes up, a, uh, takes up to uh, 5,000 queens to be faster uh, on the, uh, for the parallel algorithm. Um, right, so now backtracking. Um, so for every time you need to take a decision, you need at least one synchronization. And this, uh, I'll show you the effect here. So to uh, test that, um, we chose to uh, enumerate endpoint solutions on a big chessboard. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, so enum enumerating all the solutions uh, is infeasible for any, any n uh, above uh, 27. So what we've done here, we've just stop after we've reached the number of failures. And that also means after a number of backtracks. And what you see here is that uh, both on the workstation and the cluster, uh, the parallel all of them, uh, oh, sorry, I should wait, uh, I should say this um, first. So here we measure the time until the first solution, which is again the analytic solution. And then after that, we start searching for other solutions. Uh, in any case, you see the parallel algorithm uh, 
climb steeply uh, when you increase the number of failures, um, whereas the decode and sequential algorithm, they are completely horizontal. And that's because uh, for them, it only takes uh, a nanosecond to do backtrack, basically. And for the cluster, it takes five milliseconds. So there's like a factor of million there uh, going on. Um, all right, uh, and then the last uh, thing um, we've tested on a um, uh, little scheduling uh, problem where we schedule a task graph uh, on a bunch of parallel machines. Um, and uh, we vary the, the number of machines that can be assigned uh, that are that can actually as, um, uh, execute a task. And so we have tasks on the one hand, machines on the other hand, so we have this bipartite graph. And uh, if all machines can execute any task, we have the full dense graph. That's uh, then we are here at 100 percent. And if only 10 percent of the machines each time can execute a task, then we are at the left side of the axis here. And um, so, if you increase the graph density, you will add more edges. So the sequential algorithms they just need more time. Um, but for the uh, par parallel algorithm, what you see, well, initially it, you need a little bit more time when you increase the number of edges, but at some point you go down again, and that's because the diameter of the graph increases <laughs> again. Uh, so uh, now I can finish with my conclusion. So yes, you can use the, uh, this parallel algorithm if you have a problem with many variables and large domains. Um, and if you only require a little backtrack research, um, Yes, you need, you need to have a good search heuristic, but uh, that should not be a limitation because in such large problems, you need to have a good heuristic anyway. Um, and as future work, we plan to parallelize more, more constraints. I think the, uh, I, I, I'd like to uh, <laughs> read the main constraint uh, paper now. I'm really curious what can be done there. Uh, and uh, uh, right, and, and I, we want to combine it with other types of parallelism like propagation and search. Uh, well, thank you for your uh, attention. Do you have questions? Yes, hello. Did you uh, check to see how much time you spent for which components of the application? Uh, yes, 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 because no, normally in sequential, uh, it's like 28%, uh, 20% for the matching and 80% for the. Oh, sorry. So this, this yeah, for the strongly connected components. And uh, yes, um, um, yeah, for the, for, the, for the dance case, uh, yeah, where, where I was doing the, uh, the, end, uh, the end means there on the chessboard, it's like that. Um, uh, I did not test for other. Cases, um, so I'm not sure there. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, the, that's what I can answer. Yeah, that's. And the other thing for for tasks, uh, you can use the uh, search and don't bother to try to to parallelize the propagator. And sometimes you know, that may work much better. <laughs> Parallel search works better if sometimes. Yeah, I mean, so, so if the, you look at the embarrassing parallel Yes. You, you don't try to parallelize anything, you just parallelize the search. So, so, the, the, so the, the nice thing here is that uh, the graph is partitioned over the processor. So you can actually use combined memory of all the processes together to really handle really large problems. And that's what you cannot do with uh, parallel search. As long as you are not that bad. Uh, well, if you have 10,000. Uh, queens means you have uh, 100 million uh, edges. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's an answer. So if you look at the people who you know, try to do um, like the GPU, for example, or the parallelize algorithm, usually it takes. Yeah, you can parallelize, but uh, it doesn't go fast. Compared to another alternative. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you.